Uh, welcome once again. This will be our last um, thermodynamics discussion. And, um, and just uh, to sort of show another way of looking at it, another problem that you can solve, using chemical thermodynamics as it relates to equilibrium, we're going to do one more integrated kind of thermodynamics equilibrium problem. And in this one, um, here's the situation. We have this uh, reaction where we have solid uh, lead carbonate and it's going to turn into uh, lead oxide, and uh, which is solid, and also carbon dioxide gas. And so it's a decomposition reaction and uh, we see there's an equilibrium right here. And um, the question then becomes at 230 degrees Celsius, uh, what is going to be the uh, partial pressure of CO2. Um, and, and so what we understand is that thermodynamics is going to cause the, you know, and pressure is going to be different because gas particles are going to move at uh, different speeds because of the temperature, and so it's going to change the partial pressure. Um, and so, but we want to figure out at this temperature, when uh, when we hit equilibrium, and equilibrium is going to be guided by the thermodynamics, and so remember, the equilibrium state is the state at which the thermodynamics is satisfied, and so they kind of become in harmony, and uh, we'd understand that um, that uh, temperature is going to change it. So at every different temperature, you're going to have a partial pressure that is different and a different equilibrium and such. So. Um, so what happens though is um, we can we can take this and we remember that at equilibrium, right? At equilibrium, our um, our change in G equals the gas constant times the temperature times the natural log of the equilibrium constant expression. So the equilibrium constant expression for the partial pressure of CO2 is going to equal just the partial pressure of CO2 because it's the only gas in this equation. Now before we do that, and you see a bunch of other things just showed up on the screen, um, we, have to, we have to figure out what, the, um, what the, the change in G is. And we can figure that out by using this equation, right? The, this, uh, we can figure out the change in G for any reaction um, if, we, if we know the individual uh, change in G's for those chemicals to begin with. And, and these ones happen to be ones that you can look up in the back of the book, whereas that uh, acid one wasn't. Uh, so we had to solve for this. Uh, so um, let's just look those up in the back of the book. And when we look them up in the back of the book, we find that we have a negative 625.5 here, negative 187.9 here, and negative 394.4 here. Now, pointing out some of the thermodynamics we learned before, Solids have lower thermodynamic um, or lower energy states than uh, or ent entropy states than than do the uh, the gases, and so you'll notice the gas here is higher than the solid. And this one is I got a high a high number because it's a complex ion or complex molecule. We we found out that the more complex the molecule, the higher this number gets. So uh, a lot of these numbers, you know, you can just look at and, and match up with some of our previous learning. So let's go ahead and find out what our standard change in free energy is for this reaction by taking the products, adding them together, and subtracting them from the reactants. So this plus this minus this is going to give us a total of 43.2 kilojoules. Well now we've got a number that we can put in here. Um, we know what the R constant is, we know what the temperature is, and um, then all we're going to have to do is solve for the 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 pressure of CO2 at equilibrium for this particular temperature, you see. And so at different temperatures, uh, using this um, integration, you can solve for all sorts of cool stuff, and uh, partial pressures is one of them. Now in this particular situation, the partial pressure expression only has CO2 in it because these are two solids and we don't include them in the equilibrium expression. Um, so if you had more than just CO2, of course you would have to um, then solve for um, solve for x and, and dividing that up uh, using a little bit more algebra in addition to this one. So this one's a little bit easier in that um, our equilibrium answer is actually going to give us just the partial pressure of CO2. So the um, add equilibrium 
All we have is a partial pressure for CO2 because none of these are going to make a partial pressure because they are not gases. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and I'm going to solve this one out for you. Pretty simple. We're going to take our change in G um, and I'm going to make it into joules. Remember how we talked about how this is in kilojoules and since the R constants in joules, you have to change one or the other. I, I like to do it this way where I change um, this by multiplying it times 1,000. Uh, it becomes negative because this is negative right here. So negative 43,200 is my change in G that I insert from there. And that's going to equal my gas constant times my temperature in Kelvin. So since I had 230 degrees Celsius, of course, I'm going to add 273 to that. And um, that's going to give me the 503 number that I have right here. And then I'm going to multiply, well, and so then if I take this, multiply them by, by each other, and um, divide this by those, I get negative 10.33 equals the natural log of the partial pressure equilibrium. So then I'm going to have to take the inverse of that. And so the inverse of the natural log uh, right here, you would type in your calculator, it kind of looks like an E with a uh, X or a caret, um, to the negative 10.33 is going to give me the Kp, which is going to equal the partial pressure of CO2. So take the inverse of the natural log of negative 10.33, and I get 3.26 times 10 to the negative fifth is the um, partial pressure of uh, CO2 at this temperature. And, um, and we can use thermodynamics then to sort of tell us a little bit more about stuff and find out things that we haven't been able to find out before. Um, so hopefully that helps with uh, solving a little bit more of integration, kind of finding out a specific thing with partial pressures, and you can do this with concentrations. I mean, any, any equilibrium constant expression, you could solve for its equilibrium, and then if you know the concentrations, um, you could insert those and, um, and solve for an individual one or just solve for the equilibrium constant expression um, for that particular situation at that particular temperature or solve for partial pressures like we just did here. Um, so hopefully that helps to uh, clarify that up and uh, show a little bit more integration on how thermodynamics and equilibrium are related because temperature changes my equilibrium. Um, you know. Uh, so anyways, uh, good. Uh, that is done. We're finished with uh, thermodynamics. Uh, good luck on your tests and homework.